Welcome into Giants post game wrap up presented by Mercedes Benz, the official luxury automobile of the New York football Giants. I'm Madeline Burke alongside Giants Super Bowl champion Sean O'Hara and Sean Giants four game win streak comes to an end with a 26 to 7 loss to the visiting Arizona Cardinals here today. What are your immediate reactions? Yeah, Madeline, so much momentum coming into this game. The Giants were feeling it and a spirited performance by the defense was completely overshadowed by basically a, a, a goose egg offensively. They could not take care of the football. They couldn't take care of the quarterback. Got off to another slow start, and that ended up being their un, their undoing. You mentioned the slow start. Daniel Jones got the start today. He came His first game back from that hamstring injury. Came out in that opening drive, immediately got hit by former giant Marcus Golden, loses the ball, and not a great way to start this one. No, Marcus Golden, we actually talked about it on first and 10. John Schmelk and I had the matchup of Marcus Golden and this, I mean, Daniel Jones had no idea he was getting hit. The scoop up here, the force fumble, he ended up getting tackled right there. But that's an awful way to start the game. Defensively, they did a great job holding them out. They, they stuffed them on third down, held them on fourth down. Got a great pass breakup by James Bradbury to not give up any points. So great job by the defensive rallying. But you've got to do a better job to take care of the football. Yeah, you mentioned that defensive stop. I mean, look at this. First of all, they had the defense was the strength of this team, especially that first half. James Bradbury leading the league in passes defense with 17 now on the year. But to be able to hold them with that field position. Yeah, when you get a short field like that defensively, you come out, you've got to find a way to make a spark play. Take Crowder with a nice pressure there. He's stacked back to back weeks of getting after the quarterback. They did a great job last week against Russell Wilson, and right there, good pressure. And you mentioned James Bradbury with a nice uh, nice breakup. Yeah, I mean, the defense kept this Giants team in this game, but the offense really couldn't get it going. Quarterback being pressured all day. Daniel Jones uh, got hit quite a bit. Eight sacks from Arizona on the day. Daniel Jones and Colt McCoy both uh, taking some hits back there. Yeah, I mean, the, the defense was just teeing off on them. And, you know, we showed this one, Marcus Golden with the sack. He was unblocked. You know, this one was kind of more of a coverage sack. Daniel Jones not looking like himself. The hamstring kind of bothered him. Normally he would take off and run. Then you see a twist right here, Hassan Reddick off the edge. You mentioned those five six. That was a fran franchise record for Arizona. And then this one right here looked like it hurt Daniel Jones' hamstring again on that. Uh, some of these are coverage sacks, and he just had nowhere to go with the football, had to eat it. I think a lot of that coupled from them trying to get back in the game. They didn't run the ball as effectively. Here's Reddick, Hassan Reddick with another sack. This time it was against Cam Fleming, so that became the theme. And, look, when you, when you have that happening offensively, you're trying to find a spark, trying to find a rhythm. The screen game wasn't really there, and, and I think Daniel Jones' lack of mobility really led to a lot of that. Yeah, the lack of mobility, we were saying, you know what, why isn't he using his legs more? But, you know, you mentioned Hassan Reddick, New Jersey native Hassan Reddick, setting Temple the Cardinals Owl. franchise record with five sacks through the day. The Giants, you know, had some opportunities. They had some moments that were just so close that you wanted to see them get involved in some of these plays. I mean, we got to take a look at this. I mean, right here. Almost. Logan Ryan, you could see the disappointment when he didn't come up with that. He's got both hands on it. It's a catch. DeAndre Hopkins does a great job of batting the ball away, and then Daniel Jones takes a hit and delivers this strike right here. Golden Tate has the ball in his hands and gets it knocked out. So those are two big plays that could have totally swung the momentum either way. Yeah, absolutely. And the Giants defense just had a trouble getting to Kyler Murray today. Just one sack on the day, breaking that streak of two sacks per game. Uh, turnovers, also an issue, especially one a very interesting one that seemed like it had a little UFC vibe right there. Kylie Fitz kicked the ball out of Dion Lewis's hand on special teams. Yeah, the Miyagi crane kick, if done properly, no one can defend. Look, the Giants put the ball on the ground five times. This you don't expect. Deion Lewis is back there. He's a veteran. He knows to take care of the football, but you're not expecting the leg kick. Uh, the ball comes right out. And, and, of course, another short field for the defense to come out. That play would end up leading to a touchdown right here to Dan Arnold, the tight end. Logan Ryan kind of lost his man in coverage. Uh, but Kyler Murray almost looked like he was throwing the ball away right there. So that turnover led to seven points, and, and that makes that's tough. You know, when you're trying to get back into the game, you can't keep putting your defense out on the short field. The defense did a lot of work today to keep the Giants in it. The offense had some nice spots, too. We'll continue to talk about this as Giants postgame wrap-up continues. We'll also hear from Giants head coach Joe Judge. That and much more coming up on the program. Stay with us here on Giants postgame wrap-up on the MSG Networks. And, hey, for the latest game highlights and analysis, Download the Giants mobile app on your device's app store.
he was capable of. Um, we knew he was going to make certain plays here and there. Uh, but yeah, we, we needed to do better um, keeping him in there and making sure uh, we had our game plan set. Um, and we just, like once again, didn't play uh, as well as we wanted to. Oh yeah, I mean, anytime you lose, it's always a, it's always a wake up call. And I think uh, the really good teams focus on uh, getting better no matter win loss. Um, and if you're able to do that each and every week uh, and correct those mistakes that come up, um, you're going to be that much better the following week um, and that much better as a team collectively. That was Giants linebacker Blake Martinez. A wake-up call indeed as the Giants continue to fight for positioning in the NFC East. And after the 26-7 loss to the Cardinals, head coach Joe Judge addressed the media. All right, guys, first just want to give credit to Arizona. They came out and played a good football team today and uh, or played a good game. They outplayed us. We were outcoached. We were outplayed. We have to do more to be successful. We have to have a better week this week and take steps forward as a team. A lot of mistakes we made in the game that can't happen again that we've got to work hard to correct. Um, some positives from the game, but positives always get overshadowed uh, by the negatives when you put bad football on tape. That being said, you know, we'll go back to work this week like we do every week, and we'll start you know, getting prepared and make gains on the next opponent. That being said, I'll open up to any questions you may have. Well, I thought he was able to protect himself in the pocket, which is the main concern in terms of can he step up, can he move it. You know, we knew that there was going to be some situations today where, you know, he wasn't going to be able to pull it down and just, you know, run as he had in the past. We knew it was going to lead to throwing the ball away or possibly taking sacks at certain points. That was something we knew going into the game. Uh, we saw some of that early on. But I thought overall he was able to show that he could protect himself in the pocket, you know, and checking on him at halftime and checking on him throughout the course of the game. You know, that was really kind of the feedback we got right there. No, I have no regrets on playing him. We made a calculated decision based on what we thought he could do as a player. Uh, we went out there, and as a team, we have to execute better. Well, I got to look at the tape before I make a lot of, you know, statements outside. But look, ultimately, I mean, we've got to coach better. We've got to play better to execute. There's things that we did today in terms of turnovers and penalties. Uh, we've got to take those off the map. You know, you can't have success when you do those things. You know, give them credit. They played well. They were able to get the ball off us several times. And, you know, those led to points. So we got to make sure we do a better job protecting the ball and finishing drives. You know, I'm going to have to check with him right there. Uh, after the game, I kind of just touched base on him a little bit in terms of how he was feeling. But in terms of, you know, where he is coming out of this game, we'll have, you know, more news on that internally tonight and tomorrow morning based on how he feels. And then can you just go over the, uh, the decision on the third and one deep in your own territory late in the third quarter? Uh, you cut through that, that pass down the sideline instead of uh, pounding the ball and trying to get the first down? There was a matchup we thought we liked right there. There's things we talked about going in in terms of game plan and how they played and things we do to make plays down the field. That was part of what we discussed going through the week and what we practiced. Um, look, we've hit some of those throughout the season as well. They've been big plays for us. So we'll sit here right now and second guess everything we did. We went in, we knew what the plan was. You know, we'll look going forward if that's the best thing for us or not, and we'll make the decision based on the opponent and how we're playing within each game. Pat Leonard, Daily News. Hey, Joe, did you give any thought to taking Daniel out at halftime and uh, the fumble on the first drive? Seemed like something that he had cleaned up in recent appearances that shows up again. How critical? Well, there's 11 guys on the field when that happens right there, so that's not you know one person's fault. There's some things we have to do better in terms of communication, identification. You know, it all ties together with protection, ball security. So it's not just one person on that play right there. You know, in terms of thinking about taking Daniel out, um, look, we checked with him health-wise. You know, we kept getting status updates on right there to make sure that he was in you know the right state to keep playing. The feedback was all positive uh, from both him and the medical team. And then, you know, on a side note, that did we have conversation about getting Colt in the game? We had some brief conversations about it, but that was not based on health. That was based on, is there anything we need to do to change how we're playing game plan wise and change up maybe some of the play calling or what we're doing on some of the other things we practice. We made the decision that it was best to stick with what we were doing, you know, and try to make some things work and kind of make some subtle adjustments right there. Um, but as far as the conversation with Daniel, as long as his health stayed up, we we're committed to putting him in a game today. Really took a step back today after playing really well for the last month. 
What was the biggest difference there and what went wrong? Well, let me look at the tape and kind of go ahead and break everything down before I make some bold statement right now. But those guys have been working very hard. I thought they made a lot of gains throughout the entire season. We'll take a look at what happened today. You know, these guys did a really good job in terms of some of their packages and movement, and they had some good matchups. We have to finish better. We have to play better. So we'll take a look at that tape and adjust what we have to. Jordan Ryan, ESPN. Hey, Joe. In retrospect, how much does it change your offense and limit Daniel when he, when he can run? Say one more time. Kind of skipped out a little bit on me there. I said, how much does it change your offense and limit Daniel in general when he's unable to run? I mean, he did, I don't think he attempted a rush today. That was obviously been a big part of his game this year. Well, it's something that's been very positive for our offense this year is Daniel being able to run the ball and extend some plays right there. And he had a few today. He got outside the pocket and had some passes down the sideline, you know, a throwaway and a completion down there at one point. You know, obviously, you take away part of the offense in any regard, it's going to affect how everything else complements itself right there. But, you know, look, we'll work this week. We'll see where he's at physically. We'll make decisions going forward in terms of how he has to structure his game plan. We'll take two more. Do you need your offense at some point? I mean, you're scoring like under 20 points a game. I know you guys have been able to win that way. But do you, do you need at some point for your offense to kind of, you know, put some points on the board, significant points? I mean, yeah, listen, we're playing complimentary football is the goal right there. All three phases playing together there, Jordan. So, look, we're trying to finish drives and work as hard as we can to stay on the field. We didn't do a good enough job of that today. We got to do a better job next week. We'll take two more. Jackson Hart, Zach Rosenblatt, Hey, Joe. Um, it seems like the third straight week, special teams has been making a few, uh, some errors. You know, there's the, the drop kick return, some directional punting issues and coverage tackling. I'm just curious, like, how, how concerned are you about that, that group? I know you're talking about the three phases being well, this is a phase that's been a strength for us for a large part of the year. We've got to make sure we just keep on moving forward. We've got to get back to some fundamentals this week, you know, work as a team collectively, and make sure we make gains this week on it. Cleveland's going to be a very good team in the kicking game. We're just going to take all week to prepare for them right there. So we'll make sure schematically and fundamentally, you know, we make improvements this week. No, I don't think we had any kind of a hangover from going out to Seattle last week. I, I don't think that's a cause of it right here. And again, you know, this game was completely independent of anything that happened before. Uh, we simply didn't come out today and we didn't, you know, coach well enough. We didn't play well enough. And that's just the hard truth of it. We do a much better job. You know, one thing about our guys is I know they're going to show up tomorrow to watch the tape. I know they're going to show up on Wednesday to practice and they're going to be locked and ready to roll. And we've got a mindset around here and they're very committed to it. We're going to go back to work. And regardless of what the result was today, that's going to be the same approach, same mindset as well. So, look, it's going to take everything we had this week to prepare for Cleveland. They're a very good team. Uh, we've got to make sure we adjust and correct what happened today, and we've got to move forward as a team. That's just simply it. Regardless of what the result was today, we have to get better as a team. That starts with getting back to work this week and going hard. That sound from Giants head coach Joe Judge was brought to you by Toyota, the official vehicle of the New York Giants. And, Sean, understandably a lot of questions about Daniel Jones's health. We did see Colt McCoy get in the game late in the fourth quarter. But Judge did emphasize when talking about the offensive struggles, there are 11 guys on the field. Yeah, I mean, everybody's got to bear that cross this week. And guess what? The questions aren't going to start. They're not going to stop. They're going to be there all week about Daniel Jones's health. But really, can they take care of the football? And this offense got off to another slow start, Matt, and that to me is the issue. Two weeks in a row now, they have zero points in the first half. They've got to find a way to get some production early on. And then when you look at the fumbles, yeah, they fumbled three times. Two of them were in the first half. But the five three and outs, that really gave them no rhythm offensively. They could not stay on the field. And Daniel Jones, look, he didn't play last week, so he needed that rhythm. So offensively, to not be functioning – for Daniel Jones, I thought he was a little bit rusty. His first couple of throws were a little bit errant. It took him a little time to kind of get back into the groove. And the fact that they couldn't stay on the field put their defense at, at a in a tough position. When you look at what Arizona's defense had given up coming into this game, the five weeks prior, Matt, they were giving up 30 points a game. So this should have been a defense that the Giants could have taken advantage of, and they just didn't get it done. Absolutely. All right, we got a lot more to discuss as Giants postgame wrap-up continues after this short break. We'll hear from some of the players, that and much more. Stay with us. Giants postgame wrap-up presented by Mercedes-Benz, the official luxury automobile of the New York Giants, continues after this.
This week's scoring drive of the game is brought to you by Investors Bank at the official New York Giants checking account only from Investors Bank. Visit InvestorsBank.com slash Giants for more details. For the drive of the game, we take you to the third quarter. Giants starting off up tempo. Daniel Jones hits Wayne Gallman on second down, moves the chains with that one, then hands it off to Gallman on the very next play. A 16-yard run up the middle for Wayne Gallman. Then Daniel Jones drops back third and four and sends it. Golden Tate with the nice grab takes it down the one-yard line where Deion Lewis would punch it in for the one-yard touchdown. Putting the Giants on the board in the beginning of the third quarter. Seven plays, 75 yards, takes 314 off the clock punctuated by that one yard rushing touchdown by Dion Lewis. And that was your Investors Bank drive of the game. Now we're going to have a listen to what James Bradbury had to say talking about the success of Kyler Murray in this one. I think his strength is um, his mobility, uh, being able to make plays uh, when there's no play there, you know, being able to scramble around and make uh, draw time for the receivers to get open. Um, so I think that's what he did well today. And uh, it's definitely tough on our D line because he's a he's a fast athletic guy. Um, we just got to, you know, figure, figure out a way to contain him. We didn't do as good as last week, you know, containing uh, DeAndre Hopkins today. Uh, but I, I still think, you know, he didn't, he didn't really wreck the game for us. Uh, we just had a few mistakes on him. Sean, James Bradbury saying, you know what, he didn't really wreck the game. 136 yards in the box score. But watching this game, that was a quiet 136. Yeah, it was very sneaky-like. And, and I think DeAndre Hopkins coming into this game, he knew he was going to have a tough opponent with this Giants defense with what they did with, to DK Metcalf the week before. They did a lot of different things coverage-wise. And I thought they did a great job, not just, you know, with DeAndre Hopkins, but trying to keep Kyler Murray contained. They didn't give up a lot of big plays. But they also Except only rushed three guys a number of times. Except maybe this one. That was a 40-yard gain right there. Murray to Hopkins is a, is a tandem that has been working out pretty well for this Cardinals offense. And that play was the fourth quarter. It was The game was kind of already out of hand, so it was kind of padding his stats. But I thought the one thing that was evident, Kyler Murray was scrambling a lot more in this game, and he tried to get out of the pocket. The Giants' plan was clearly we want to rush, we want to keep him within the pocket. There were a number of times they only rushed three, three guys, and they had Jabril Peppers as the spy rusher. And the speed of Kyler Murray surprised Peppers. Peppers had a phenomenal day. He was all over the field, but Kyler Murray's speed made it tough to handle sometimes. Yeah, we've heard teammates of Kyler Murray saying, hey, you know what, he is not just game fast. He's fast, fast. Not just fast for a quarterback, just fast, Sonic fast. the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog. All right, well, we got a lot more to come up on this show. We'll hear from Giants quarterback Daniel Jones. That and much more coming up here on Giants postgame wrap-up presented by Mercedes-Benz, the official luxury automobile of the New York football Giants. Play like that, and, and uh, you know, we just didn't didn't execute uh, throughout the whole game, and, and um, you know, didn't do enough, didn't move the ball well on offense, and um, you know, that that was certainly disappointing for for all of us. We had a good week of practice, and and um, you know, felt like we prepared, and you know, it's it's about what you do on Sundays, and, and we didn't get it done, so uh, certainly disappointing for all of us. Welcome back to Giants post game wrap up. That was Giants quarterback Daniel Jones. Sean, a, a deflating uh, performance by the Giants offense today. Yeah, deflating, seems. disappointing. Use all those adjectives. I think for Daniel Jones, he just needs to speed things up. It looked like the progression was taking too long. Some of those sacks were coverage sacks, didn't have to happen. And then again, take care of the football. We can't continue to put the ball on the turf. And perhaps, too, some of it might have been, you know, getting back into a comfort level. He was limited in practice most of this week. He was out there on the field. I mean, obviously, he's in his second year as a pro quarterback, but it seemed like he was getting the rust off a little bit early. Yeah, I think that was an, an issue, and I think the first down production hurt them. Not having the big runs by Wayne Gallman early on put them into third and long. All right, well, they've got a, na uh, a game next week because, like Blake Martinez says, they want to uh, use Not this one game, as a wake-up call. It's a flexed game. It's a flexed game. And you know what Joe Judge said when he took this job? He wants to give Giants something to be proud of. They can be proud of flexing the Cowboys out of Sunday night football, and Giants are facing the Browns Sunday night. Yeah, and they've got a potential you know, offense, a uh, very potent offense with Baker Mayfield, but the rushing attack of Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, that's going to be huge. How about for the former Browns players? Not talking about me, <laughs> talking about Kevin Zeitler. All right, Jabril Peppers, they were both involved in that trade with OBJ. They'll be looking forward to taking, taking on their former team. Absolutely, and the Browns are going to be on a short week. They're going to be playing Monday Night Football against the Ravens, back-to-back primetime games. Does that play into it? Well, I, I think, you know, for the Giants, they're just going to be looking to get back on track. For, for Cleveland, it's not a lot of travel. Baltimore's not too far. 
uh, com- coming back here either. Uh, but I think, you know, for, for them to have that primetime energy, it's going to be huge. I know who else could be juiced up. Freddie Kitchens. Oh, yeah. I mean, the juices are going to be flowing here at MetLife Stadium. We're going to be missing the fans. But you know what? For the observant ones at home that notice, we have a new location. We will be here again next week, and we are going to be live after the game. So you know what? Right after the game, flip it over right here to MSG Networks and watch us right here. Thanks for hanging out with us. Tune in next week live after Sunday Night Football. For Sean O'Hara, I'm Madeline Burke. We'll see you soon.